Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Psalm chapter 23. I know we know that, that Psalm too well. The few moments that I have to share right here. Please open up your hearts. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, God. Pray with me, please, Almighty God. We come before you this morning. We ask God that as the bread of life is broken, let it bring strength to our body. Let it quicken our spirit. Let it break down the barriers in our minds, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And whatever struggle we may have, Father, let it strengthen us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Take control. Let me speak that which is on your heart, O oh God. Take control of my mind. So that I may speak that which is on your heart, God. Thy will be done, O God, in this place and in our lives today. In Jesus' name. Psalm chapter 23, verse 1. Please read with me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I want to pause you right there. I realize there are times that God moves in us. There's a season for such. Sometimes God will show you things and sometimes God will show you nothing at all. Nothing. Sunday, into Monday morning, God showed me something. By Tuesday, when we were about to close prayer, Sister Desai said that, let us pray against the spirit of death. And I said yes, because it was a confirmation For the past three days, we prayed against the spirit of death. And what happened is that what God, what the Lord showed me on Monday morning is that I was moving to and fro. And as I moved, I was moving to and fro, souls were being saved. No, I didn't understand. But while I, I reached a certain place, I saw a shadow approaching. Let me let you know something. This the shadow that I saw, there was not no any shadow. And the shadow began to speak to me and told me this. I remember after. It said, I am coming. Let me tell you something. I saw the shadow moving in. You know, when you look at a cloud, you will see the cloud, it is sailing in the sky, and it's taking its time. The shadow moved as a cloud drawing closer. And as it moved closer, it began to speak to me as I said to you. And I am saying, but why are you coming? 
and it said, I am coming. And nothing can stop me. And then the Lord began to speak to me. And the Lord said, do not fear. Let me tell you all something. The shadow of this death is nothing to be played with. I jumped out of my bed so fast. And there and then, when I took up, took up my Bible and I went to the kitchen, and I began to read the Bible right there, the Spirit of God spoke to my spirit and said this one thing. He said this. He said, the reason why you could have seen the shadow is because my light was there. Let me tell you something. If I should shut this light off and leave a light on, you will see a, a shadow, it will, it will be cast somewhere around here. You understand? A shadow cannot come without light. Listen, this is spiritual things here. And the Lord said, do not fear. Why I stood in the kitchen, he said, do not fear. Because my spirit is in you. And I am the light. Amen. And if I am the light in you, there is no shadow that can overshadow you. Hallelujah. And he said to me, as in my word. Listen, I stood in the kitchen at attention. Because I know that God was speaking to me. Amen. Amen. And he said, if you dwell. In the secret place of the Most High, under my shadow, which is my light, which darkness will overcome you. Come on, look around you. There's fear in the land, there's fear in the world. Let me let you know one thing the Antichrist will make his appearance. Because the world is looking for somebody to do something. Amen. No longer can NATO do something. No longer can the United Nations do something. Listen, because listen, what does it say? Listen, let us have talks. And the talks, they are breaking down. Imagine this one thing. United States and Russia, they come to go, you know, to us to talk about the situation that is in Ukraine. And the, the situation, even though they have, they're they speaking, people are still going ahead and doing what they want. Then what is the sense of we coming to, to speak? I remember probably a year before last year, Donald Trump, he went to Kim Jong-un, who's the president of, of North Korea. And they are spoken about nuclear this and nuclear that. And while they're doing that, this is what is this is what has happened. After uh, Donald Trump goes back to America, this is Kim Jong Un because they spoke about bringing on nuclear plants. You think Kim Jong Un studying Donald Trump? He's going ahead with his nuclear plan. When Russia and America, listen, they're talking about, listen, we need to do this concerning our nuclear plan and concerning Iran. You think Iran is studying that? Iran said, listen, I'm going to have my nuclear plan running. You think Russia is studying anything? I'm going to have my nuclear plan running. Because why? This is the hour of betrayal. Listen, people, nations will betray one another. And when those things it is happening, what is going on? That listen, death looms in the air. Where there's war, there's casualty. And when there's casualty, there's death. Amen. And it looms. There are many countries I know. They will want listen. They will say to themselves, "Listen, you know, I don't want no war, you know. But you know, if war still." If war happen, you know why oil will sell? 
Come on, play as if. Listen, this is serious. What's the price of oil right now? Our government is in a deficit. We heard the other night on news. Some, uh, some, uh, a few 13 or something billion dollars. If a war only starts, listen, let me let you know something. Oil will move from $30 a barrel to 100 and something dollars a barrel. Because to run a nuclear plant, you need oil, you need gas. That's the truth of the matter. So here it is. David, he said, he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. There are times in our life we are walking through a shadow, you know. Amen. But what he said is in the valley. And the valley, listen, it's down to the foot of a mountain. So he, listen, you are being shadowed by mountains. And sometimes in our lives, in our situation, there are things in our life that we are being shadowed by. And because we are shadowed by it, it could tend to make us feel like this, like this will die. I can die. Something could happen. You know sometimes when you think, you ever look at when you see things happen to people around you? And when you look at, you see things happening to people around you. It gets you scared sometimes. You know why it gets you scared? Because you're saying, listen, Lord, I wonder if my turn come in. You see things happen to your parents, to your family members, and you say, Lord, I don't want that to happen to me. Listen, you don't have to fear. Because God is within you. Amen. He is with you. Amen. And even though you are being overshadowed by something, there is one that is greater than that which, is, that which wants to overshadow you. Amen. Listen, you are under where the shadow of the Almighty. You know, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You hear what the psalmist said? He said, yeah, do I walk through? You're not staying there. In the first place, what did the psalmist say? Today is not much scriptures. But what did the psalmist, psalmist said from verse 1? The Lord is my shepherd. So in the first place, he is the one that is leading you. Sometimes there are times, listen, the things that are happening in our lives, we don't want it to happen. But listen, God is leading you. He is bringing you through. In the first place, here's what um, verse 2 said. He made me to lie down in green pastures. He led me beside the still waters. You're talking about a desert place. The world is a dry place today and always will be. And they going to say, listen, he's my shepherd. So for him to be your shepherd, you have to follow him. Yeah. And there are times in our life, I tell you this one thing, if we choose to do the things that we want to do, and follow the path that we want to take, there are consequences. Yeah. But when you are following God, when you are, listen, God, where you lead me, I will follow. So there are times in all life things is dry. But listen, let me tell you this one thing. He said, listen, he leadeth me. He made me to lie down in green pastures. So that place, it was dry. 
But listen, I'm looking to you to bring me to that place. You see, we love Psalm 23, you know. And we love that, oh yes. But are we really following him? He said, he leadeth me beside, beside still waters. Beside still waters. In a desert place it is dry, but he knows where the spring is. He knows. The other day, a couple Sundays ago, we, we, we went to Parman to Sister Nicholas. And while going up there, uh, I was speaking to Sister Nicholas' husband. I said, Spa! Crash, is spring still there and crash? He says, Spa, it's still there. And while we go in, you know, while we pass in that place called Crash, in Paramin, I can see the water, it's still springing. And I told him, I said, listen, when it didn't have water from Oasa, I remember that, listen, my mom said my sister and I, with oil bottles, with four liter oil bottles or a gallon bottle, and she said, listen, all you go up and crash and full that. And I'm gonna let you notice one thing, and when you reach a crash, it had people falling bucket in. But God prepared that for us, because he knew that at some point in time, Wasa wouldn't have no water empowerment. But he made, listen, he lead us, lead us on beside what? The still waters. He restored my soul. He knows what we need. Amen, amen. And we don't go after the things what we want. He will provide. Lord, Father, God, where you lead me, I will follow. Jesus, Jesus. For you to be a sheep. For you to say, listen, and you're a shepherd. You have made up your mind, listen, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to be tempted to go away, but I'm going to follow you. I'm going to keep my eyes on you. Hear what it says. He restored my soul. He led me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Because of who he is, he's leading you along that path. And let me tell you something. In the desert, Sometimes you have to take your sheep up the mountain because on up that mountain that is where the green pastures are. Sometimes you have to take that sheep down, down in the valley because that's where the water is sometimes. Have you all seen how water runs? Or how a spring develop? You think you could go up on a mountain and find a spring? You wouldn't go up on a mountain and find a, shrink, a spring. It's down to the bottom. Because whatever moisture is above or within the mountain, it seeps through. Listen, and it, 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 it's some small cavern, and the water begins to settle right there. There's a place in Paramin, uh, probably today's about history, and it's called Lassus. Is that, that river still functioning? No? No, no, Lassus, that is in Montreal side. So there's a Lassus down where and Bopwe as well. Yeah, wow. Water. It still have water. Straight through, guys. Straight through. So I listen. By Tampa Beach. By Tampa Beach. Oh, so that's that, that water that comes from there. Right. So imagine how that water flows. It comes from the mountain down. And sometimes, sometimes for our souls to be restored, God has to bring us down. <laughs> and when you are coming down the mountain, let me tell you something, you could fall. You can fall! And hear what he says. That's why David could have said, but here do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. 
sometimes when listen to richly place that God had for you, you are sometimes you go through a dark time. Everyone that is sitting down in this place today, everyone down to my children, you all can stand and say, Listen, I know where God took me from. I knew, listen, I know what God did for me. And you can stand up and say, listen, I know that, listen, I was sick. I had struggles. But God, listen, it was at that time, I felt lonely, but God brought me through. Everyone. And while I'm going through it, it never feels easy, it never feels good. You know what it is not to have any money? Yes, yes you do. Yes. You know what it is not to have any food? And you know that your children will ask you for something? I'm sure you do. Yes, yes. You know what it is not to have no money in the bank? Yes. Yeah. And you say, listen, you pray and you say, Lord, don't let nothing happen to us. Don't let nothing happen to my family because I have a cent. Not even to buy a bottle of Panadol. Yes, amen. I don't know about you, but I know about that. Yes, yes. Amen. And when you're going through those things as dark times, because you know, listen, if your, your child have a fever and you don't even have, listen, a bottle of a, a, a panadol or painol. Listen, for the one that is, a, 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 I think it's about 150 ml. It is 33.95 right now. Imagine you have 33.95 to buy a bottle of painol to ease and fever. If you have no bush, what you will use? You know what you will use? In the name of Jesus. Let me let you all know something. Yes. Sam was sick a couple of years ago. And when Sam's sick, we given Sam, you tell me something? We given Sam pain all. Or panadol, whatever the case may be. And fever not breaking. You all hear what I say? Yes. And my wife said, she said, baby, the fever gave hot. And on top of that, this is what happened to Sam. Sam saying, so, and boss, she said, I seen something. The fever going to her head. Yes. And we said, Sam, you don't have nothing there. Listen, I'm holding the child in my hand. I said, Sam, you don't have anything there. Up to this day, let me tell you something. She still remember that too. When you see you're going through something that is real hard and bad, you don't ever forget it. Amen. Amen. Two weeks ago, the child was like, that I'm all sick. And she said, listen, and I saw the thing on the table. Let me tell you something. I prayed. Nothing happened. But while I prayed, this thought was in my mind. Bigger. That is God. Because at that point in time, as parents, your mind could get flustered. You could feel confused. And let me tell you something. The water, you know what time it was? After 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. And all pipes, at that time of the night, the, 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 the wind blew him. So the water in the line, it cold. We, listen, I took Sam and I carried Sam in the, listen, and Sam was there running. Right I took Sam in the bathroom. I said, she said, what are you going to do? What are you going to do, daddy? I said, I have to bathe you. And I throw the water on Sam's head. Sam start to scream. Because it's cold water. And as she start to scream, let me tell you something. Out of Sam's nose came blood and cold water. We could have lost our daughter. But because of the prayer, he spoke to my spirit. See, baby, one meter. Blood and coal. And 
from that moment on, the fever started to break. We just had to keep monitoring her, and the fever started to break. And the nose started to run. We know that's God. Let me let you know something. Sometimes when you're going through something in your life, you don't always get people to say the thing what you want them to say. Amen. You don't always get the advice. You have to go through it. And it's God that's having to try and speak to you. Because he wants you to know that this I am there with you. That's why the psalmist has said this one thing. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. He ain't gonna leave us. Let me tell you something. Sometimes you're going through some real hard times. And you may come to church like this on a Sunday morning. And you know what? You may say, God said a word for me. And you're getting no. You say, God, let me preach up, say something to encourage me. Nothing. Doesn't mean that God is not with you. Thou art with me. Because God wants us to trust in Him and to lean on Him. Not the pastor, yes. not our wives or our husband or our children. Trust in Him. Amen. There are times in our life we have money. There are many people who have money. Money come and money go. And you're asking God, listen, uh, do something. I'm here doing nothing yet. What you do? Curse God and die. <laughs> you know, sometimes when things happen, when we are going to listen, when we are shadowed by things, you know what's the nice thing about it? When something wrong happening. Even though we may not see a physical appearance of it, we can sense it. Yes. Amen. We know something is wrong. Amen. I cannot put my finger on it, but I know something is wrong. That's why the word of God said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. That's why we are the battle of the let's say Satan. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. With your authority and power that God has given me, I bind your works in the name of Jesus. So the power that God has given to us, we use it. Yes. Let's go. Preach, Pastor. Preach. Listen, there ain't time. There ain't time. Listen, you're, you're going to call somebody to pray for me. And when they pray for you, listen, the situation is still the same. But God is still there. You call another person and say, listen, I want you to agree with me. But the situation is still there. But God is looking at Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, but thou art of me. Yes. I praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know this morning who this message is for, but all what I know is for all of us. Because there's coming a season. There's coming a time, listen. You see, today you're here because tomorrow you're gonna to be tested, hallelujah. And we're gonna trust in the name of the Lord because the name of the Lord is the word of God said, a strong tower, the righteous run into it under the shadow of your mighty. Oh my God. What's a shadow? A shadow is a dark area or shape produced by a body coming between the rays of light. You see, here was the shadow, here's the definition of it. 
a dark area or shape produced by a body coming between rays of light and a surface. So you see, God is shining over us. He's there. But there are times he allows Satan that darkness to come and block that light. And even though Satan come and cover us with that light, we need not fear. Because listen, I'm reminded there are times that my wife years ago she woke up and she said, Daddy, she said, she said, I saw this spiritual being. And she said, when I wake up, listen, this is real, real thing. And she said, Daddy, I saw a spiritual being. Because she woke up from the sleep and she saw, tell me what it was again, something behind my head. No, don't, uh, uh, in, in the leap flat. But uh, matters not. Tell me where. It was between you and her. Right. Yeah. And was a spiritual being. And she said, Isn't that that's the one when you said that, uh, when you go to call the name of Jesus, hold your voice? No, the one between you and her, it started to be. Right. Just like this. Right. This no. For that one. What about the one when you had to call the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ and, and it held your, 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 your voice so that you could not say anything? That was the one over. Hovering, right. So there was something that was hovering over my wife. And in real time, she's seen this thing. Yeah, I wasn't sleeping. Not sleeping. So she's caught in the spirit right there. And she's seen this thing hovering over her. The way she began to, when she got to open her mouth to call the name of Jesus, it's trapped. When you are dealing with spiritual things, the shadow the cover over her. Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah. It kept her physical. And she said she could not have said anything. But Satan forgot that she knew the word. Because the word of God is greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So what she did is that, all right, I cannot say it out verbally, but I'm going to call his name in my mind, because God knows what is on my mind. And she began to say, Jesus, Jesus, help me, Jesus. And there was a breakthrough. And it released her. That's the power of the name of Jesus. You may want to shout out over me. Do what you want because why? God is loving you. Because I know that, listen, the lion of the tribe of Judah, when I call upon him, he's going to be a And you're going to flee. Yes. Yes. Oh, wow. Mm. Whatever may be happening to your neighbor, yes. God is with you. Whatever is happening in the world, whatever is happening in the country, know this one thing, that God is with you. Your body may not flow as how it's flowing. Know that God is with you. God is in control. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Praise his holy name, Jesus. So it's listen. This shadow... The Hebrew word I didn't even write it down, but it means it's the shade of death. It's the shade of a grave. It's, a, it's a grave. It is deep darkness. It is terror. It's calamity. Sometimes we have a sense and we say, listen, there's something wrong. There's something wrong in the atmosphere. The day it is brighter and the sun is shining brighter. But you know that there's a darkness in the atmosphere. Hallelujah, but don't you fail. Who oh, praise his name? Yes, that's the name. That's the name of it. Semaweth. That speaks of God leading his people safely through 
no matter how our place or experiences. That's what he shouted. That is it. When David spoke about that, he's like, God leading his people through. The thing that you are going through in your life at present, or that which may need to come, do you all know what's going to happen tomorrow? Do we think that, listen, we are going to always be on the mountain? There are valleys. And the valley is going to come. And don't in the valley, listen, you don't know what you're going to be down there. You see, down in the valley, that's where the darkness is. If you know a valley, how it is, it's what, as I said before, early, early on. It's down to the foot of the mountains and it's between the mountains. And sometimes, listen, according to how close the mountains they are, the light, it is harder to penetrate truth. But you have a shepherd that is with you, bringing you through. Hear what all of that says. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Let me tell you something. Why you think the shepherd has the rod? So that when the evil beasts come around, how the word have it right here, and I didn't write the Hebrew word for it. It is like a piece of wood, a safe. So that when even something come around, it's sheep, that thing will get a beating of a lifetime. Do not come around, man, sheep. So that's why the Sabbath can say, Hell Lord, and I stop, they come for me. Touch not. I am not. So imagine when the evil, that's why in the book of Psalms said, in it's Psalm 27, when the evil men come on up, yes. Praise Psalm 27. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Look at verse 2. What are we going to take it from verse 1? Psalm 27. Lord is my light and my salvation. I know you all know it by heart. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And hear what it says. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat my flesh, they stumble and fall. You've got to have a shepherd looking over you, and you've got to be following a shepherd, not me, Jesus. Because when you're home, I'm not home with you. When you're in your situation, I'm not in it with you. I may know about it and pray about it, but you are in it for yourself and God, your shepherd. Amen. Amen. And when Satan comes and he throws thoughts in your mind, his Holy Spirit will say, listen, repent it. Remember what my words said. When the spirit of heaven is because of the thoughts that Satan will send to you, remember what my words said. For the spirit of heaviness, he gives a garment. And you will just begin to say, God, I praise you. God, I exalt your name. I am free by giving you praise because I'm feeling heavy. My mind cannot function, oh God, Father, cannot think straight up. But I will praise you. I will exalt your name, oh God. I will sing the Lord's song in a strange and land. Even though my soul may be weary, I will praise him. Even though I'm feeling heavy, I cannot move, I cannot talk to nobody, I will praise you. I will open my mouth. No spirit of dumb or heavy to look something from pressing my heart. Amen. 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 
Shanta, ha? Sources. Oh my God. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. That's where the rod is. You think it, they are stumbling and falling because of you? It's because of him. Because he could give you his word, it will bring comfort. In the New Testament, Jesus Christ said, I must go. He said, in the book of John, he said, it is expedient. It must happen that I go so that the comforter will come. That's the Holy Spirit. That's our rod and that's our staff. You see the staff, but with that staff, there's a hook as we know. And if one should fall, that hook will hook the sheep and pull it up. Because you see, sometimes going down that road, it could be a cliff. And you need guidance. We're talking about the desert, we're talking about rocky terrain. And the word of God went on to say, Thy rod and thy staff. You see, the rod will also keep us in check as well. So when we go out of line, whom the Lord loves, he chasteneth. And when you are chastened, you sometimes you don't understand it at the moment, but later on you say, God, thank you for chastening me. Because it keeps you in line. You see, when you are in line, you tend to be on a straight path, straight path. You see, if you go off path, you could damage yourself. But if you stay on line, you'll realize it's hard at times. But it's, listen, you're comfortable. I may not have everything, but I'm comfortable. So we will be chasing. Yes. Not each time. Sometimes he allows things to happen for us to know. Oh, gracious Father. Gracious Lord. <laughs> Isn't God mighty? Yes. Let me let you know this one thing. Your job, it will not be taken. Your family will not die. Let me tell you something. It is because of you. Listen, your family and all that. Yes. But because God has a covenant with you, He will have mercy. Yes. Let me remind you Job, he spoke about darkness and the shadow of death. In the book of Job, there are many, many scriptures or verses rather. Consider the shadow of death. And it ain't pleasant. And even though Job, he walked perfect before God, God didn't save his children. He saved his wife. Thank God we have a new covenant under Jesus Christ. Joe, he got more children. You know, sometimes what I say to myself, Job wife, I don't know. God bless Job wife. 
I don't know how old Job was because the word of God said at his charm they were having a feast. And when this wind came and killed them and so on, and only one servant came to tell the story, and on top of that, Job had more children with his last same wife, even though she said, curse God and death. Listen, put yourself. Let me, let, let me draw an illustration for you. Have you seen someone suffering so much? And you say to yourself, Lord, it's better you take them now. Because they're suffering. Look at right here. Yes. Only thing I've been a mama girl and say, No! In the name of Jesus, look at right here. Yes. I say as the Lord is suffering. Yes. So I'm sure the woman loving her wife, even though Satan came and spoke through her. She said, Curse God and die. Because you had everything. Now you're a pauper. And on top of that, <laughs> ooh, I shot her. On top of that, sick. you're sick and you have boils. Cause God and death. Lord, that I take him now. But John said, Though he slay me, yet will I sell him. I will praise him. Job and said, yet though he slay me. Yet when I say I will praise him. You know what I will say? That is man. That is man with a heart to praise and serve God. He began to speak so much things. But God forgive him. But he had a heart for God. Yes. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Brother Stephen, Lord, I don't even need to go into the other scriptures because, Lord, your work is done. I don't know, but you know. Brother Stephen, he said, he said he read this scripture this morning, and for some reason, it's in the book of John. And he said, Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world, and if, and he that walketh in me will not walk in darkness. Listen, are you all hearing that? I am the light of the world, and he that walketh in me. Let me tell you something. Jesus said, I am the way. So if you are in the way, who is Jesus? You are walking in light. Yeah. Around you may be dark, but there is light within you. Yeah. When you have that light, the psalmist said, My world is a lamp unto my feet. I was speaking to Pastor Dexter earlier on in the week. They started his ministry, and his ministry just about a year. He was doing ministry work before. And you know, even as I stand here this morning, I remember his words. And he said, he said, you know, sometimes when the when the word of God said, his word is a lamp. He said, a lamp to my feet. He said, a lamp. It is shining quite well. Just as the psalmist said, the lamp, it's only to your feet here. 
right or wrong. Because listen, it's showing us enough where we could put our feet. But you see the Lord on? He knows. Because he prepares a way for us. And we just have to stay right here. Keep that light right here. And though I walk through the valley, the light is right here. Of the shadow of death. Death is all around you. You are hearing death. You are seeing death. Listen, my God, you could even smell death. But I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Come on. Just stand on your feet. And before I close, as usual, you know, I love to ask you to come and sing this song, Our oh, Father. Please come and sing that song, Who Art in Heaven. Please. What is real? Hallelujah. Our oh, Father, who it's hard to keep our mind on what God says because before us it appears that that's the truth meaning that what is before us it is more real than what God is saying but because we believe what God is saying what he, because his word is true it changes situations because his word is life and to our dead situation we can speak the life of God it 
in the name of Jesus. Let's make our declaration today. Remember we are the bride of Jesus. And when God is coming for a church, he's coming for a church without spot, wrinkle, message. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 6 he said, Be ye holy, for God is holy. I am holy. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14 says, Without, you cannot see. And as we say, this is not a time to get ready, but to be ready. Maranatha, the Lord is coming. God is real. Come on, give him a clap offering this morning. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody get approved. Let the church of the living God bless the name of the Lord. He's good. He's good.